Hi everyone, I have written an article on Medium, you can check the link in the description about understanding the GraphQL error handling mechanism within the Spring Boot app and I've decided to make a short video explaining what I did there for those who don't want to read the entire article. So at the end of this video, you will have a better understanding of the error handling mechanism behind the scene and we get to see how you can customize what you send back to the client. If you don't know anything about the GraphQL error response specification, I strongly recommend that you read at least the first part of this article where I do a GraphQL quick summary. Our sample will consist of two endpoints. One for creating a user that returns an error if the user already exists. The second for getting an existing user that throws an error if the specified user does not exist. Without further ado, let's start by setting up the required Maven dependencies. GraphQL Spring Boot starter embarks the needed Java GraphQL implementation libraries and other libraries as well. GraphQL Spring Boot starter is an embedded web-based tool for playing with our endpoints. Our model is represented with this user plain all Java object. Our service class is maintaining a list of in-memory users acting as a database. This is where the exception will be thrown, so let's define our exceptions. User not found exception, which is extending the runtime exception. And user already exist exception, also a runtime exception. Now let's throw from our service class a user not found exception when the specified user is not found with a custom message and a user already exist exception when the created user is already existing. Next, let's define our schema. This one speaks by itself. We have the user type, the read request, the query, get user returning an object of type user and a write request, the mutation, create user, returning a user as well. Finally, our resolvers, user query, resolving the get user endpoint, and user mutations, resolving the create user endpoint. Now, let's start our application and test different scenarios. If you try to create a user Everything works as expected and we receive the ID of the created user. But if we trigger the request again, we receive this generic message telling us something bad happened into the server. If we try to get a non-existing user, we get the same error message. Well, nevertheless, in the backend, we threw two different exceptions with two different messages. Unfortunately, not only are the details as defined by the GraphQL specification missing, the error message is also inconsistent. As it indicates, it serves site error, yet it is a client side error. Let's consider the scenario of the generic error message as case number one. For case number two, we want to return the message of our exceptions and additionally tell the client what is wrong with his request so that he can react accordingly. To do so, let's make our exception implement the GraphQL error interface, which corresponds to the GraphQL specification error format. First, with the user already exists exception, and then the user not found exception. Notice that the method get locations and get error type are mandatory, but we will return null for the moment as they will be near in this scenario. In the case of user not found, we want to tell the user which field was invalid. Hence, we will add an additional field within the extension box of our error. That's why we also implement get extensions method. If we now query for a non-existent user, we have a much more elaborated error mentioning our custom exception message and the additional field as well, telling the user that the username was invalid. Well, you may ask yourself what just happened. Let's dissect both cases. 
Basically, when the program throws an exception, two things happen. First, the throw an exception is handled by the simple data fetcher exception handler, the default implementation of the data fetcher exception handler. The handler wraps four things. The thrown custom exception, which is the runtime exception, the exception message coming from our exception, the error locations coming from the GraphQL engine, and the extensions coming both from the GraphQL engine and from our exception. It wraps them within an exception while data fetching error, which is an implementation of the GraphQL error interface. Then the exception while data fetching is added to the list of errors. After the simple data fetcher exception handler process, another handler comes into action to handle the return list of errors. It is the default GraphQL error handler. The default implementation of the GraphQL error handler. This handler gets the inner exception within the wrapper error issued by the data fetcher exception handler and filters every exception that is not an instance of GraphQL error. He considers them internal server errors that have nothing to do with the GraphQL error layer and which should not be delivered to the client. And that's pretty normal and justified as behavior since no one wants to see its internal server errors related to the customer. That's why he wraps them within a generic GraphQL error that has a generic message. In case number one, we had a generic error message as our exceptions were not instances of GraphQL errors. In case number two, we have a full exception while data fetching error as our exception implement GraphQL error. If the simple data fetch exception handler behavior doesn't fit your use case, you can create a custom data fetch exception handler implementing data fetch exception handler. Then define your own logic and throw something different than an exception while data fetching GraphQL error. However, this is something I will not advise as you can find yourself breaking the rules of the GraphQL specification by sending a non-standard error message unless you really understand what you're trying to implement which, in my humble opinion, does not work as they already implement a pretty good behavior. Similarly, if the default GraphQL error handler behavior doesn't fit your use case, you can create a custom GraphQL error handler implementing GraphQL error handler then define your own logic and handle GraphQL error differently. As an example, let's suppose we are not satisfied by the string exception while fetching data dash dash dash, which is automatically appended to the error message sent to the user. And we just want our original message, the error without any fences. We will send our unwrap original custom exception to the final user by defining a custom GraphQL error handler implementing the GraphQL error handler interface. We are going to modify this behavior. We override the process error method by telling the handler to first check if the error is an instance of exception while data fetching, then extract our original exception that can be a user not found exception or a user exist exception and return it. Otherwise, the handler will just return the receive exception as it is. Now, if you try to create a user twice, we get only our message without any additional message. And this is valid for both requests as we even get our extension field for the case where the user is not found. Of course, now, we can add our own locations, error type, etc. by just implementing the corresponding method in our GraphQL error. As you can expect, if we return an empty list of locations when the user already exists, our response is modified accordingly. Now you can fully customize the error that you send to the client. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to clap the icon 
Like the video and stay tuned for more interesting topics.